Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community. This is Father Jonathan. It's such a joy to be speaking to you all. I want to extend a special greeting to all our young adults or college students who watch these videos, or really anyone who watches these videos. Uh, we hope that uh, all, of the, uh, all of the programs, the projects that we're presenting on our, our social media channels uh, provide spiritual nourishment, encouragement, uh, as you continue to grow in your life of faith and your spiritual lives, as you grow closer to Christ, to deepening your relationship with Him, and uh, and also having a deeper relationship, a more connected relationship with the Scriptures. And uh, for that reason, uh, the videos of the past few weeks and ongoingly will be reflecting on the Gospel and or Epistle reading for the Sunday to come, so in anticipation of Sunday so that it's not the first time you might have heard what's being read in the gospel or the epistle. And it certainly might not be the, the first time you've thought about it and what it means and how it shapes uh, your day-to-day -day life. And hopefully these little snippets of thought, uh, snippets of ideas and encouragement will, will help you grow and, 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 not, uh, and have a, a deeper, stronger connection to the gospel and epistle readings each time you go to church on Sunday and throughout your lives. And so uh, in line with that, we'll begin our discussion of this Sunday's gospel reading, which comes from the 18th chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. And in this gospel reading, uh, we see a, a, a ruler, uh, probably a ruler of the synagogue or a leader, an archon it says, come to Christ and say, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, and what must be said here is he's not saying like just generally what must be done, but he's, he's asking like what things, specific things, must I do to enter into the kingdom of heaven to receive eternal life? And Christ immediately responds first with something peculiar. He says, why do you call me good? For only one is good. And he's speaking and referring to God. And it's not to that he's somehow in this moment denying his divinity, like some might say, or that he is somehow didn't in understand himself to be somehow connected to God or, uh, or, or know himself to be divine. What he's trying to say is goodness doesn't come from any particular thing that one does. Goodness comes from God, all goodness, because God is the good. And so anything good that anyone does is not of their own merit, not of their own uh, exercises or practices or things that are do, they're doing. But goodness comes from God, and because God alone is goodness itself. And then he goes on to tell, you know, tell the man in response to his initial question, well, you know the commandments. You should not commit adultery. You should not murder. You should not steal. You shall honor your father and your mother. Now he chooses of the Ten Commandments, a certain number of them. And interestingly enough, he chooses those commandments that relate to our relationship with other human beings, with others. Whereas the first four commandments uh, deal with our relationship with God, the fifth through the tenth commandment deal with our relationship to one another, our relationship to our parents, our relationship to our neighbors, how we should treat them, and what's important in that. And so Christ responds with these, and the man says, I have kept these from my youth. And Christ says, yes, I see that you have, but one thing is needful. And it's interesting because of, of the commandments that Christ names that have relationship to, uh, to other people and how we should relate to other people, he doesn't address or doesn't cite the one that talks about covetedness, coveting the things that our neighbors have. And I think he doesn't say that because he recognizes, and in his response, you see this, where the man is still lacking. Because he says to the man, one thing I see is still needed. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. And now the man on hearing this was sad. He was morose. This isn't what he wanted to do because he was really rich. He didn't want to give up his wealth. And it's in this passage we see something. And it's not that Christ is saying that there's somehow something awful with wealth, or that wealth is awful, or it's evil. Or uh, St. Maximus, the confessor, or beloved saint of mine, would say that, uh, that wealth and money, gold, isn't evil in and of itself. It's its misuse that can be evil. It's our, it's our passionate attachments to it that can be 
uh, that can that can lead us uh, away from God. And what Christ says in this passage is that he sees in the man the one thing still needing for him, that he is overly attached to his wealth, and that if he wants to enter into the kingdom, he has to he has to separate himself from those things which he is attached, which are preventing him from authentically loving God, following Christ, loving his neighbor. Now for us, it could be that we are, uh, we are attached to the very same thing that the rich man is. We're attached to seeking after money and making sure we have enough of it or overabundance of it, and we can be greedy and uh, and an and attachment and attached to it in that way. But it can also be that we're attached to other things, like things themselves, like having all the nice latest stuff. I talked about that last week. Um, it could also be that we're attached to particular status or way of being seen in the world, or we're attached to uh, a certain location, or we're attached to a certain team, or it's a sports team. Or any number of things, we can be attached to so much. We could be attached to our own selves. We could we really be only concerned with ourselves. And really, that's a lot of what uh, self uh, love and 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 uh, not uh, being selfless. A lot of times is the root cause of many of our of our falling shorts in our spiritual lives. And so Christ isn't here saying that wealth is bad. Um, but what he is saying is that attachment to it and attachment to anything can be problematic in our spiritual life. After the man went away sad because of what he heard from Christ, he says, Christ says to, uh, aloud to his disciples, how difficult is it for a wealthy man to enter the kingdom of heaven, to have eternal life? And this is a challenging thing for many of us. It certainly was a challenging thing for, for the Jews at the time, for his disciples, because wealth and prosperity were seen as blessings from God. So how could something that is a blessing or seen as a blessing somehow be something bad or something that makes it challenging for one to enter the kingdom? And again, it goes back to that idea of being attached to it. As many people who are wealthy become attached to it. Many people that have a lot, have an abundance, or, or are seeking after it in some attached materialistic way that prevents them from authentically connecting to God and to their neighbor. And so that's the challenge here. How do we not be attached to whatever is the one thing that we still have to do so that we may inherit eternal life? Think for yourselves this weekend and ongoingly what is the thing that Christ would say to me is the one thing needed, one thing still needed? Even if I keep all the laws, even if I don't steal or kill or, co or covet or, um, or I don't, um, I, even, if I, if, even if I'm honoring my parents, even if I'm loving God and having no other gods before him, perhaps we might be mistaken and realize that although we do not worship another God like a deity, we certainly worship other gods, like things and stature and status and, um, and money and, and all of those things. So what is that one thing that we still have to work on? As we go through the Lenten period, this, this Advent fast, um, think about that. And perhaps even though we're a weekend from today, you can begin to fast from those things that prevent you from connecting authentically with God. God bless you. It's such a joy again to be speaking to you. I hope this was enlightening and uplifting. Feel free to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms. Leave comments, ask questions, ask, uh, leave challenges with anything that we ever say. Uh, we'd love to engage with you. If you have other topics that you'd like us to discuss in addition to our weekly videos, we'd be glad to, uh, to uh, We'd be glad to work with them and think about them, meditate on them, and reflect on them with each and every one of you. God bless you.